Thanks for joining me again. Uh, now, following on from the scales that I did yesterday, which was bonded onto the liners, um, they're now at this stage. So I'll be squaring those off, taking the excess liner off. I'm also checking it is bonded correctly. Um, I've also got uh, something I've been looking forward to doing over the last few days because it's actually not been raining. And in this section of the garage, um, it's not advantageous to do it in the rain. Um, I've got this little piece of wood here. Okay, um, that has been uh, sawn up in order to get it in the car. It did actually be, just imagine something the length of a door by about that big. I've had it cut into four in order to get it back home. Um, but the difference in the way that it's sawn through the tree, um, if I come up to the camera, if you either get nice grain or when it's nearing the edge you are getting sport but if you cut it a certain way you get lace wood or a snake wood effect so I will be using my circular saw to go in through uh, these pieces of wood in order to get the best effect that I can and then those sections then go in the airing cupboard and I'll see them again in about 10 months. So this is future stuff, okay? Um, one piece I can actually bring forward a little bit for one customer um, as long as it doesn't split because if you force it you'll end up with sh the stuff all shakes and twisted. So um, that's the project for today. Um, and now I can move on forward. We're trying to get maybe one or two of those uh, scales onto another jackal. The other jackal I've actually moved on, so I've uh, I sort of roughed out the micarta. But for the time being, I'll be going onto the saw and uh, how can I lose a piece of wood? I've seen a bit.
sectioned up. Now what I've got to do is cut them into scale sizes. Some interesting bits for ferro rods or maybe a merlin if I can get it out. So I'm going back through all the pieces of wood now and getting the yield out for what knife handles are going to be. So I've got through maybe a third of the lengths that I've pushed through the saw. Now the saw is actually a real, it's a challenge to use because it's only a little screw fixy one, it's not like the beast I used to have at school. Um, and being that I worked in the school for 11 years, I'm pretty good with a table saw. It's one, it's one of the you know, long standing skills that I've got of being a wood machinist. Um, you know, I can operate planers and saws. So what I've tried to do is, in the way that I make knives, is be able to utilize cheap and cheerful versions of what I used to have a Rolls Royce of. So I've got a cheap screw fix table saw, and up in the corner I've got a screw fix um, planer flexor. And that will allow me to just process timber myself as opposed to buying it in. I got a bit more involvement. Um, so if you can imagine that door sized piece of wood I met out with that months ago. I'd known about that wood months ago. Um, it was cut into four, it's been drying. I walk past it every day, walk past it every day, picked it up, picked it up, picked it up. Do you know what? Alright that's ready now. Um, pick a couple of dry days in order to come in the garage um, to work on it and you know, I've pushed that through the saw myself over and over and over again, checking the look of the, the grain and the way the medulli rays will fly about and move, um, and the way as you're going through the wood, the, the grain will change. Um, so sometimes I've, I've had the grain go one way, sometimes I flip the, the, um, the, the, the piece I've got at the moment over 90 degrees and go through again. I still got the grain going lengthways for strength, but you know once it's on, the the thing is that either which way that it is on there, I'm getting the best character or the most even look that I can as I'm processing the wood. Um, and I've got some fabulous pieces here. I mean that that there has got some really tight, beautiful. Um, can you see that? It's like a sort of redwood sort of ish look, very light tiki sort of look to it. Whereas on the top as the uh the scales get contoured you'll end up with a little bit of sort of lace wood effect there. I mean right up to some scary there's gonna be some beautiful um Golocks coming out in a few months time. Sort of Golock berserkers. So keep your eyes out for that. What I'm hoping to do is get to the point where I can use all these pieces of wood that I've been working through over the years. Um, they're coming to the fore now because I've <coughs> allowed them to dry. Uh, again there, this one's, this one's matched. So the piece of wood went through and I've caught those two planks and put those two planks through the saw that way. So they're actually only a kerf apart in terms of the saw blade width has gone through. Go lock. Um, I keep the sizes standard uh, so I've got right down from the Kellen at 80 by 20. Um, I got a Merlin at 110 by 33. Uh, the West Mooks are one, um, 115 by 40 and then the 
same old, same old one, 40 by 40, and I go straight up then from all the other ones, Jackals, Golocks, Berserkers, Marauders, they're all sort of standard, one size, 150 by 50. So that, that if I ever end up with pieces of, um, someone says, oak flooring, if you can cut me 150s by 50s, I can get all sizes out, you know, it's just an easy standard size to remember and ease and uh, set up on a saw. Uh, but you know, it's like there's some nice tight grain there with a dash of sport, and you know, I pick them up and I'll know where it's from. Is the thing I remember where I bought that huge lump of wood. Um, these now will come in the house in a tray, go in the iron cupboard to stay warmish, uh, gradually, gradually drying out um, until I come to pick them up the day before they end up with a stabilisation and then at that point they're in a toaster oven overnight uh, just to finish them off but at the moment now it's it's pretty much as dry as it will go in a household environment um, I shall label them up with a little uh, piece of pencil so it, there's a load of admin yet for all this lot That's, that's a lot of scales. That, that's really, really light, really dry. As I say, I've processed that, I've sawn that up. So, you know, it's got a bit more um, of me in it than buying them in, but I've still got the final drying. I've still got the stabilisation, the, st the finishing off of that, and then it goes on a liner. So a fair amount of work to do. So now it's sort of five o'clock, all those are going a tray, going home, and then tomorrow, knowing what it was that we worked with yesterday, I'll write on it London Plain, and I'll crack on with the next batch of these. Um, there was one jackal I had a play with last night. I moved it on for a quarter of an hour, so I sort of squared them off. And in the next couple of days, once I've got this out of the way, it'll be the handles on jackals as the Dane Laws catch up. And the Dane Laws, I've got two. This sort of stage. So, surface finished coated a WD-40 um, and then I'll degrease it um, and then I'll black mark a pen like the whole flat of it and then scribe through um, with a I use an old carbide drip bit uh, and I'll grind out the actual profiles of them finish off around the edges so I've got to mess about with that again especially that little section there you only want to deal with that once, um, and then it'll be beveling. Loads of work. So thanks for joining me again. A little bit of a clue as to just how much of me goes into just getting the scales. Um, I haven't yet really um, brought in many scales from overseas, sort of colours and. Uh, you know, sort of exotics. At the moment, I seem to be finding more than enough English hardwood um, to satisfy my sort of Saxon, Wessex, King Alfred y uh, mindset. Because I'm, I'm, when we blades are sort of English, and at the moment, I haven't really, um, you know, apart from the odd bit of Paduke, which I've had lying around, which I like working with. Um, an African blackwood. I seem to be doing quite well um, putting English stuff on, or British Isle stuff. So, um, yeah, it keeps in with the Wessex feel, I dare say. So, thanks for joining me again. You can see what I'm, I'm up to here. Um, and I'll catch up with you tomorrow on the next sort of saying hi and how I'm doing on with the, with the work I got in the house. Catch you later.